how I made the shit last. Burning down to the wake up, go to the sun, go to the making it down. Judgment is what defies us, so deep out of trees of dust. And I'm back in the past, and I'm fine, why we're back in the past. Equals three. Welcome to our very oh, oh my man yes. here. Oh my yay! Yeah. Oh my yay! Super Fight Club Super captain Super. in the building. Oh no problem, man. Thanks for having me on. This is the second member of the Bull Maye Fight Club joining us in back-to-back -back week. Right down below, there he is, the muscle of the group, Mr. Thomas, manager of fifty-one fifty, and we are so honored. That you've decided to get us here. He is Mr. Bud Heavy. How the hell are you doing, sir? I'm living the dream, man. How about you guys? So, you mean all 360 keep your face? I'll make it look pretty, but I'll spit it first. That's who I am. So. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is. Please note.
your screen we are the video bros i am bobby monson that man beside me he is mr papa smokes and because he has the the angelic voice he's coming at you with the party time talk here tonight pop smokes how you doing you better believe it monson i'm always here for party time with the video bros <clears throat> i'm always here for mlw fusion i'm always here to do the podcast every thursday night and I'm always here to give a shout out to all my wrestling people out there. Hopefully everybody is rock and roll and getting ready to have some fun with us here tonight. Because after a little bit of a somber episode of MLW last week, we got a more rocking episode of MLW this week. And so we got a lot to talk about. Again, our boy Bob on top. Thank you for tabbing us and keeping us in your mind. Making sure that the views go up. Appreciate you, my man. That is kick-ass. Very awesome of you. And if any of you are tuning in, make sure to go ahead and get in the chat. Ask us your questions. Whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about here as we're going through this episode of MLW Fusion. Uh, but before we do, Pup Smokes, hey, you know, sometimes you got to give a shout-out to the people that make this stuff happen. Not just the people watching, but also the sponsors. And that's our sponsors over at Rogue Energy. You'll see right below you there. Right where you see Papa Smokes, check on down. That is the QR code that you can scan in order to get yourself to RogueEnergy.com. Or then you can follow the ticker down below if you want to type her all in. Make sure to use the promo code OLEPOM. It's for 10% off your order. And they are a alternative to the average everyday energy drink that you're going to find in the store. We're talking about a low-calorie, zero-sugar Packed full of flavor experience from our friends over at Rogue Energy. And we've got wonderful human beings joining us here tonight, Papa Smokes. We're talking about Auntie Wooji. There she is. Wonderful. Glad to have you here tonight. Let's get this party started, especially now that we've got awesome friends here. And again, talking about awesome friends. Good evening, my boys. It's Bathser69. My man, how you doing? Good to see you. And again, the party keeps rocking and rolling. And fries, but how you doing, brother? Good to see you in here. A lot, you know, can't wait to see what you got coming up in the near future here, my man. Uh, again, Marvel Talk with Ed Fries just uh, kicked off on OLE's podcast. Him and Andre did a kick-ass job over there. So make sure to go and support Ed and everything that he's doing as well, too. Uh, conserving energy for Saturday. That's damn straight. Yeah, Saturday is going to be a rock and roll in time because we're going out for a little bit of a party. That's right, an in-person Video bros party like never before because we're going to go celebrate my birthday a few days early. I'm turning the big 4-0, so it's got to be a big party. And that's what we're going to be doing on Saturday night. Bass are joining the fun on that evening. It's it's going to be chaos, Papa Smokes. You think we're chaos on a Thursday night? Oh, my God. Let us loose on a Saturday in Saskatoon. Yeah, I know you've been looking forward to this birthday bash for quite some months now, Munson. In the middle of the winter, we got to break out a little bit of the bubbly and have a nice celebration. It's going to be a good-ass time, that's for damn sure. But now, down to business, we're talking to MLW Pop Smokes. And again, we set a little bit of a somber mood with the episode last week. A lot of people universally not loving what went down last week from MLW. But let's call this week MLW Redemption, because this week dip packed a lot in to a tight one hour shift we kicked it off uh right at the top of the hour with cesar duran we saw court bauer recently release cesar duran was no longer the booker the matchmaker the candlestick maker of mlw so we haven't seen him in weeks now all of a sudden appears back on screen and says i'm coming back as the proprietor of azteca and just you wait and see this was short to the suite we'd see more unfold as the night went on but an interesting appearance at the top of the hour from Cesar Duran. For sure. And just when we thought we'd seen the last of him uh, once he got fired, 
from his position. It, even Court Bauer showing his face on screen for that particular uh, event. Now we've got uh, Cesar Duran back, but not in the in the position of matchmaker, but it looks like he might be a manager of talent. So this is interesting. And as we saw from his promo right at the, right at the top of the hour, excuse me, uh, he's this guy can talk and he's got a, a real dramatic flair about him. And uh, I think the crowds like him, especially when he addresses all his renegades and everything. He, he gets the people into it. So if he can talk, he can be a manager for sure. And uh, obviously looking like he'll be on the heel side of things. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, this isn't the last we would see of Cesar Duran on this particular episode of MLW, so we're going to get to that here very soon. But down to ringside, where we're joined by a different commentary team that we've seen. We've been seeing the team of Rich Bokini, who was gracious enough to join us on Ring Respect Radio, and uh, Dombrowski on commentary for quite some time. But now, our good friend Rich will keep being replaced. But you know what? The replacement that he got is someone that we both respect heavily in this business that we both think is a great commentator. Matt Stryker, back on the table for MLW. Yeah, and a, a bit of a surprise when we found out from Rich Bocchini that he wouldn't be returning. He's been a mainstay announcer for a number of years there and uh, certainly very skilled at his craft and a great guy, as we found out in our conversation on Ring Respect Radio. But... Uh, like you said, if he has to, if the deal didn't work out or if he's being replaced, uh, I find Matt Stryker very, very good on the microphone. We heard uh, uh, him even years and years ago back in Vince's company have a few runs on the microphone. I always thought he was uh, creative, used lots of, uh, of idioms and such that made uh, the announcing interesting. And uh, he was creative as well, bringing little themes into every... Uh, wrestlers commentary and stuff like that I, I expect more of that in mlw and i think he's uh he's quite a worthy replacement yes and as you said in vince's company but it might not be vince's company out for long but guess what there's no chance in hell that we're talking about vince mcmahon and the wwe on this episode of fusion because we're talking about mlw so we're going to get back into things it's great to hear matt striker back on commentary does a fantastic job throughout this entire episode and does a great job calling the very first matchup of the night and a very exciting matchup the mlw middleweight championship on the line newly crowned champion june skywalker taking on lince dorado and damn papa smokes this match was was great june skywalker looks fantastic uh this kid is well built his clean and everything he does, he had some moments within this matchup that were pure gold. So good back and forth, but Shun very much controlling a better portion of this matchup, looking like the strong, dominant champion throughout most of it. Uh, then they picked up the pace as this thing kind of went along towards the end, a lot more higher energy, a lot more of the Lucha Libre style that kicked into her. But again, the surprise is, is for two guys, middleweight guys that are heavily based within Lucha Libre, the beginning of this matchup was definitely a lot more grounded, a lot more of the uh, the actual wrestling-centric portion of the matchup off the start. They didn't get into the Lucha Libre until it got a little bit heavier into the matchup towards the end as they needed to start pulling out all the stops in order to put this one to rest. Yeah, I enjoyed this one a whole bunch too. This was a nine-and-a-half, ten-minute match for TV, perfect time. Um, both guys looking good coming into this. You and I have both admired uh, on this podcast, admired the work of June Skywalker over the last uh, couple of weeks and months. This guy looks good. Uh, and as a middleweight, he looks kind of big, doesn't he? He looks like yeah. he's over six feet tall kind of thing, but um, whatever, I'm not going to fudge about that. He looks good. He's young and uh, he's got an excellent move set. But beyond that, what a lot of people like about uh, both Lucha and a lot of Japanese technical wrestling is just moves after moves, spots after spots. And this match had a little bit of that, but uh, you notice that Shin Skywalker he clicked in with him, slow down a little bit, slow down, and then, then he started working, not just doing moves. You saw some of the times he backed out of the corner and slapped Lince Dorado across the face. It's not a five-star move. It's not a huge thing that's uh, risky and going to get the fans' attention in that way. But it's working. It's setting up something for the match. 
Skywalker working as the heel in this match, although he wasn't overly heelish. The crowd was behind Dorado 100%, and Skywalker worked the crowd to a certain extent, more than you see some of these young talents do sometimes. And I always appreciate that he's learned uh, not just uh, chain wrestling chain wrestling and series of moves, but he's got a little bit of psychology and working aspect to him too, and I always appreciate that. Yeah. And again, this match, uh, it unfolded with a lot of great things. I, I, I really like the one spot where Lindsay was grounded, Shun Skywalker was going for the standing uh, moon star or shooting star or whatever, and he kind of checked back, noticed that Lindsay had it scouted, and instead turned it around, got him into a kind of a cloverleaf hold there, and started to go for the submission. I thought that was a nice touch, a nice counter from Shun Skywalker. There was a bunch of good stuff in this match, and uh, Skywalker's got an interesting style, and it's neat to uh, watch on MLW the fact that you get to see some modern Japanese wrestlers and some modern Lucha guys. I, I see moves on this show that I've never seen before, and uh, you get to see kind of the cutting edge of the dudes that are not only working on their own style, but creative coming up with new stuff, new moves that haven't been seen. Yeah, you bet, man. So high energy, high pace towards the end. In the end, you're expecting Shun Skywalker's got this thing in the bag. He has been dominating, especially towards the end of the match. But man, Lindsay Dorado managing to find a pocket of space to get the advantage. And one, two, three, we have a new MLW middleweight champion. Our jaws dropped, Papa Smokes. This was a shock ending to this matchup. I was certain Shun Skywalker was holding on to that strap for a little while longer. Myself also, I... I... I haven't really thought about what the plan's been for uh, the MLW middleweight title, where they might be going with it, what guys they might want to be showcasing and stuff like that. But once um, Myron Reed lost to Shun Skywalker, I assumed that Skywalker was going to do a, a, you know, a couple of sets of tapings and remain the champion, but no, apparently just the one. So uh, they got him over here. They got his name over and uh, they, they, made him look good in this company. So uh, I would expect to see more of Shun Skywalker in the future. But for now, we've got a new middleweight champion, Lindsay Dorado, and he hit a real nice promo afterwards, a perfect babyface promo, he had the crowd eating out of his hand. And uh, you could see the real happiness of this guy to get a strap that means something in the business around his waist and uh, all the adulation that comes with that. Yeah, it, it, yeah, you're right. It was a perfect babyface promo, again, uh, putting over the championship. Uh, great speaker, Lindsay Dorado, fantastic on a microphone, gets to the point, gets it across. And, yeah, I like this. And then all of a sudden out comes Cesar Duran. We said we hadn't seen the last of him, and even this wasn't the last of him. He comes out with a bottle of champagne. He's telling Lindsay, hey, man, have a drink. You know what? You just won. You're a champion. We have a lot of talking to do. And it kind of just left it at that. The two of them walking to the back with a lot of conversation to be had. And there's a lot of conversation to be had as this episode goes along. But this was just the first little bit of what we're seeing of Cesar Duran possibly putting together some sort of faction, some, a bunch of people that he would like to promote in matches. He wants to, you know, maybe get behind champions is what it seems like. Yeah, yeah, and uh, from what we know of Cesar Duran and some of his shady business dealings in the background, he's uh, he's ruthless with his business, so he's going to go after the guys he thinks that can make him money. And as he said, uh, uh, as he says at one point in the show, I'm not a booker, I'm a promoter, and I promote wrestling and lucha, and that, that's that's to the core of Cesar Duran. It's it's all about making the money all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get to that promo in just a little bit here, too, because that was something else at times. Uh, but up next, actually, you know what? It is, it is coming up very soon because it starts with our boys, the Bumaye Fight Club backstage, and they're talking about that Opera Cup, or may I say the Bumaye Cup of the Gods. I believe it's been retitled. Uh, and, man, that thing's looking sharp, looking good. It's all, you know, buffed up. Obviously, Alex Hayes did take a very, very good care of this thing. Except for the big dent in it. But uh, yeah. <laughs> let's ignore the, the, well, the minor uh, details. <laughs> well, 
Well, they'll have to take it back to the uh, guys that restore the fit Stanley Cup to get it fixed up again. Yeah, they definitely are going to have to. Uh, but yes, of course, they're in possession of the Opera Cup, and they're cutting this promo talking about how everybody across the entire world, every country, wants to get in on hosting a Beaumaye Fight Club of the Gods tournament for that prestigious trophy right there. And they start listing countries, Australia, China. Tell them about Japan. That's what Myron Reed says to Alex Kane. You know, Indonesia here brings up. And then Mr. Thomas comes in. And he gives a shout out to Canada. And I'm thinking, there, there we go. Awesome. Because, you know, again, the match that they're going to be having tonight was taped actually three days after Mr. Thomas appeared on this very show with us. So that was quite awesome. They mentioned Canada. But then Alex Kane just he takes us right back down when he goes, Canada. He looks at Mr. Thomas. He goes, hey, I, I bring it up all these high spots and all these things. And you just got to bring the level back down to here. <laughs> Damn, Alex Kane. It's a good thing that I like you, bud, because that, that one hurt a little bit. That was a good burn. He said, Canada, whoever came out of Canada. <laughs> yeah, was it? yeah, that was a good one. And Melball joined us. Melball Cullen says, gentlemen. Thank you, Mel. We appreciate it. We, we, we like to pretend like we're actually the good gentlemen. Everyone Somebody alive. thinks we're gentlemen. We must be doing okay. <laughs> Yeah, we, we clean up nice seat. Look at my gentleman's necklace. It's very fancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the bling up in here when it comes to fusion. But uh, yeah, all the bling was there on display with that Opera Cup. But uh, right then, that's when Cesar Duran appears again on our screen. It was the Cesar night. You know, normally I probably would have been tired of it. But considering that all these spots were pretty good. I don't really have to worry about the amount of time Cesar was on the street tonight. He comes in here. He didn't get to say a whole lot here. He basically got ruled over by Alex Kane, who put they put the Bomaye Fight Club jacket across the shoulders of Cesar Duran. And he's like, you know, Cesar brings up, oh, well, what about Mexico? And he goes, Mexico? Well, no, because he, he doesn't have enough Bomaye. And he tells me, you got to say it. It comes from the throat, from the chest. Bomaye! Bumaye! And they start going back and forth with it. Of course, Cesar, very comical in this spot, but nobody says Bumaye like Alex Kane. Oh, what a great spot. And another spot where Mr. Thomas getting to uh, throw his two cents in worth once in a while. And uh, the, the guys are good. The guys, what a cool faction this is. Because that's kind of what MLW has been lacking since the uh, ending of Contra unit is is a big faction of a cast of characters, you know what I mean? And uh, that's what Bomae Fight Club is turning into because all of the guys can talk in that. Where Kane is awesome, Myron Reed is is a good promo as well. But now we're starting to hear from Mister Thomas, and as you and I noticed, he's got a big blooming personality that's mm -hmm. that's absolutely infectious and hilarious and. I'm glad that he's getting this, the chance to uh, to open up a little bit on TV. Yeah, that dude is absolutely fantastic. And we're going to get to see that on display in the main event coming up very, very soon. Uh, up next, uh, this is when this gets a little weird, but we'll, we'll talk about it for a moment. Uh, Hugo <laughs> is backstage and he's got a, a very large oversized pencil. And it says Booker of the Year 2022 on it. And he is attempting to hand this over to Cesar Duran. And this is where you're talking about earlier. He's saying about how he's a promoter. He didn't get things handed to him. He does it because of the violence. He didn't get this because daddy had money to hand over to him. He didn't get this because his daddy died and handed it over to him. Obviously making very quick references to both Tony, Tony Khan and Vince McMahon. Uh this, this was quite entertaining. I mean, it got the chuckles that it needed. He grabs the pencil, says, fuck this thing, throws it behind him. I mean, Cesar was kind of on fire tonight for what it was worth. I mean, they can't overdo this with him this often on screen week to week. But tonight, I, I was entertained more so by Cesar than I have been in a long time. Me also. And I think that is the thing And when uh, they were doing the Azteca and Lucha Underground uh, episodes. It was just too much, I think. I mean, every segment, every promo started in his office and he had something to do with every segment. I, th I think I just got sick of him after a while, but he is actually a good on-screen talent and a great talker. So I think part of the 
thing is that it's been nice not having him for a bit, but having him back is also good because he brings something to the show. And man, did he bring something to the show here because <clears throat> this is when things get interesting. He says he has made his first official signature to his rising Azteca group that he's putting together. And he has officially signed MLW featherweight champion Taya Valkyrie. I said it, Pop so when we were watching a couple weeks ago when Taya came out. I said she is acting borderline heelish right now. I felt something was up with Taya. She didn't seem as eager to be clapping hands with the fans and smiling and being that fun, lovable Taya Valkyrie that came bursting into MLW uh, late last season. No, no, no. She was even more serious. And then she comes out here, delivers that promo. And yeah, she means all business. And again, with Cesar Duran in her, in her side and possibly a whole faction of people being built up with Cesar here, the champ could be in a very, very strong position moving forward. Absolutely. And it looks like she's going to stop caring what the fans think. As you pointed out, she's got the black lipstick on now. That's a, uh... That's definitely a lady wrestling sign that's of a heel turn. So uh, <laughs> interesting. It's also noticeable. I mean, you called it last time. I, I didn't. I didn't pick up on this, but you did call it last time. She's as a baby face. She's normally such a pure and kind-hearted spirit and everything. She's very bubbly and very nice. So that that difference must have been uh, must have been noticeable. And uh, some of you picked up on that. Not me though. <laughs> Uh, I I maybe look a little too deep into these things every once in a while, Papa Spokes, but definitely had picked up upon that one there. And now Taya Valkyrie will have Cesar Duran backing her up and whoever it is that he signs next, because again, next week on MLW Fusion, we are going to find out the very next signing that Cesar Duran has in his corner. It is going to be interesting to see who he's going after. He's talking big names. He's talking champions. He wants to promote the best of the best. I'm curious to see who he's going to have. Uh, we also got a couple of big match announcements for next week. We're going to see Jacob Fought 2 in action once again, taking on Ben K. Should be an interesting one. I don't know uh, anything about Ben K. Myself, Bob Smokes, are you familiar with Ben K's work? Well, just a little bit because when they announced he was going to be coming to the Fed, I just briefly kind of looked him up online and uh, he looks like uh, he's been through a couple of incarnations of characters. And now in the last year or two, he's come out as Ben K, who I think that name is taken from a famous fighter in Japanese history, possibly before there was television and stuff. Might have even been a fighter from the 1800s or something. So he's got uh, the name of, of, a, of a famous warrior. And uh, the guy looks like he might be pretty all right. He's a good-sized guy. Looks like he might be a, a good... 225 pound dude and uh yeah to me he looks like he might have some uh promise now sticking him in there with jacob fought two for his first match is a real tough spot for him to be in but uh hey sink or swim we got ben k coming into mlw next week and this should be interesting i like seeing japanese wrestlers or any kind of wrestlers that i haven't seen before yeah, I can't wait to see that one kick off. And again, we have another big matchup for next week as well, too, Pop Smokes, because they also announced a MLW featherweight championship matchup for next week. Ty Valkyrie is going to be defending that championship against the debuting Trish Adora. Again, Trish Adora, definitely a name that I have heard within the industry who's been making her mark quite a bit. So again, they are actually bringing in somebody of name status here. They actually really seemingly, if you've been following online, are digging deep and bringing in a, l a little bit more of the who's who of the women's uh, wrestling revolution that's going on all through North America right now. Yeah, definitely sounds good to me. I, I've heard Trish Adora's name many times on uh, the internet. Um, I haven't watched any of her stuff yet, but to me it seems like she's a well-traveled, independent wrestler. Um, from what I can tell, she wrestles in lots of different areas of the country which is a good sign because it means she's in demand and another good sign because it means she's working with all kinds of different talents in different areas that have different um, tendencies and different uh, styles of wrestling and stuff. So it's kind of like in the territory days in a way you would have to, you don't just wrestle against your home promotions roster that you already know you're traveling around and getting different 
styles and different uh, 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 types of wrestling and such. So that's just rounding you as a, as a performer. Yeah, you bet. And I can't wait to see that debut next week. We then go on to the next thing of the night, and that is a video package with the big headline reading. And Duca pulls out of the championship matchup with Alexander Hammerstone. Had to, you know, leave the tension there, Bob Smokes. Can't go wrong with a little bit of tension. I see what you did there. <laughs> it's that kind of show because it's a late night on a Thursday night. We'll do whatever we want to do. But yes, uh, talking about uh, how Nduka basically used his legal team to get himself out of the Falls Count Anywhere match against champion Alexander Hammerstone, assuring that that match will have to go down at a later date. Curious to know if it ever actually did happen. I know that it was scheduled and booked at one point in time. I don't know if the match was taped and they're just teasing this thing to carry out a bit of a storyline or whether or not we're, we never actually got that match up and that's still to be seen further down the road. I guess we will have to find out that. We'll see how things develop with the Duke. We still haven't even settled on what's going on with the Tag Team Championship. We haven't seen Calvin Tagman in quite some time and Duke's Tag Team partner, especially since the Battle Riot. So a lot to be said about this. And... Uh, Speaking of Alexander Hammerstone, we got him in a promo pop smoke said showing all about his year in 2022, his start to 2023, and that promo was absolutely perfect from Hammerstone on this thing. And again, this is why this guy is the baby face lighting it up all across the world for MLW, and he highlights that. He's traveling the world with that belt, showing that this company has something to prove that they can't won't be messed with, and also saying that he doesn't want to just be the next guy to be holding the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. He wants to be the guy who is synonymous with holding the MLW World Heavyweight Championship. And he's gone a long way to cementing that because uh, for the longest time, you know, Jacob Fatu was the guy in, in MLW as the World Heavyweight Champion. But since Hammerstone has won the belt as uh, on the babyface side of things, He's really done an awesome job of representing the company as champion. And, you know, you can just say that, well, a, a wrestler wins a title and he just remains, he or she just remains in their persona, in their character kind of thing. But I think you also have to alter that to now act like a world champion. You have to show some class. You have to show that you're intelligent and uh, that you work hard. And that's what Hammerstone does, perfect baby face stuff. I work hard. I struggle. I, I'm sore. I get injured. I'm, I'm defending the title against different people all over the country and all over the world. Everybody wants me for matches all the time, but I'm trying to get out there to all of you because I want to defend this belt. And it's, it's inspiring. It lifts up the fan that's listening to it. And you can't help but admire a guy like Alexander Hammerstone. He's got the whole look and everything. You can see by his body that he's one of the most disciplined people you can imagine to, to build his body like that. And then uh, now, you know, he, he's a wrestler and he, uh, he takes his craft very seriously as well. And uh, he's a good follow on Twitter. I like reading his tweets. He's got his head screwed on the right way about the wrestling biz because he was trained well and he understands what it means to work in the ring and to uh, entertain the fans and, and to draw money and, that's what he's in the business for. He right, he's an excellent representation of a champion in wrestling. Uh, just you know, not on quite the same level as some of the greats before him, but uh, like a Ric Flair or a Harley Race or a more in the more modern era, like a Nick Aldis, that didn't have the hugest stage to stand on, but acted like a real champion and uh, represented his company as a class act. Yeah, man, and he's going to carry that on as he goes forward, and he could end up being the guy synonymous with it. Again, we have not seen the end of his championship run. We don't know where this is going to lead him. There could be many more championship defenses and many more victories for your boy Hammer coming up in the near future. Uh, moving on from there, we get a video package backstage. It is Davey Boy Smith Jr. with the Billington Bulldogs. They are pumping up, getting ready for their matchup, get, basically getting all stretched out, doing squats, getting prepared. Man, I, this is really I, like I, I familiarize myself a little bit with the Billington Bulldogs. And again, they're young. They're very young. So again, we're getting some very 
new green talent in the in the business but of course legendary dad hopefully they've watched some of his matches this is gonna be the first matchup i've actually physically watched them so interested to see uh definitely need to grow into some size but that's mentioned by matt striker even on commentary he says that with age they're definitely going to grow into their own the you know the physique will pan out there's still a couple of young boys that'll come with time of course but holy shit davy boy smith jr now you want to talk about a man with some beef on him a physical specimen this guy damn it man did he look like gold standing in there yeah always does the guy's an insane religious trainer and uh He's also six foot six and 270 pounds. He's a big guy to begin with, but I've watched some of his training videos. He does all different kinds of training, including uh, muscle building and uh, all that stuff, but also a lot of core training and body weight stuff and kettlebell stuff and all kinds of uh, insane wrestling training stuff that was used in Greco-Roman and, and in the old days of uh, wrestling in India and stuff. He does all those workouts, and uh, the guy's a, a specimen to behold, absolutely. Um, he's been a, a big force in MLW in the past. He's not wonderful on the microphone, which is one of the only kind of things holding him back a bit. But um, I think still just aside from anything uh, uh, appearance-related or uh, wrestling-related, he just needs to uh, find his kind of personality and find his gimmick a little bit and he'll blossom forth as a as a top wrestler but uh still working on it at this time but this will be helpful to the billington bulldogs having a older guy and more experienced guy with them to kind of mentor them and bring them up in the business they'll have a much easier time with it with uh their uh, uncle or uh, on their side well, and the legacy is there as well, too, because we're talking about the uh, the famous Dynamite Kid and the British Bulldog, Davy Boy Smith Sr. Uh, the two of them, one of the greatest tag teams of all time that can't even be disputed. Uh, you know, the British Bulldogs were absolutely phenomenal. And again, we're going to get to see, you know, this newer, new age version of them. And of course, the, the sons of Tom Billington, the Dynamite Kid, and of course, Davy Boy Smith Jr., uh, going to be rocking and rolling here and taking over that legacy. I'm very curious to see how it pans out. And you know what, Pop Smokes? That means we better find out how it pans out because it's time for the main event of the evening. This match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. Yeah. Here we go. It's the our boys. Boom, I a. Boom, I a. Boom, I a. Yes, it's the Bull by A Fight Club, Alex Kane, Mr. Thomas, and the young goat, Myron Reed, with the entourage coming out with the Opera Cup. And they're going to be taking on the Billington Bulldogs and Davey Boy Smith Jr. We're going to get our first look at the Billington Bulldogs in action here. And again, as we said, definitely a size factor for the one guy. He's definitely the smallest one in there. When you see him up against a guy like Mr. Thomas, you're thinking, uh-oh, but he's tall, and he's he's definitely got some some ability. It, it, the ability is there, and I think that he will grow with time. His brother, on the other hand, um, definitely green. Not going to deny that at all. But if there's more potential in the two currently, I would say that the one brother that, like you said, looks a lot more like the Dynamite Kid. I believe it might be Tom uh, Thomas. Yeah, I think so. The two, yeah. Man, that guy, he definitely stood out between the two of them to a point where you think there's someone who's going to be a, somebody who could be turned into a star one day. Yeah, I wasn't really sure what to expect from these guys. I knew that they would be green. The MLW didn't try to suggest anything other than that they're just starting their careers in wrestling. But I thought they looked actually pretty good. And like you say, mm -hmm. the, the one brother was 19 or 18 and one was yeah. 21. So they're so preciously young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the one, they're both small. They they don't have their man weight on them yet, but and, and they need it badly. But like you said, the one guy just kind of has, he's kind of working on the fundamentals. You saw that Myron Reed, wrestled with them at the beginning both guys for quite a while because i i would surmise that reed could carry them and work with those dudes much easier than kane or mr thomas um especially when the the billington bulldogs were on the offensive 
uh, Reed could feed them and sell to them and all that mm. kind of stuff. But that that worked out quite nicely. That that whole first third of the match kind of went nicely with um, both Bulldogs tagging in and uh, the, the young guys wrestling with Myron Reed. Then when Big Davey Jr. got in there, then we got some more size in the ring on the other side too. Alex Kane throwing around some suplex and Mr. Thomas looking pretty good too. He's, oh, yeah. he's, he's so tall and so big that it's, he has to bend over further to pick up his opponents and all that. It, it looks like uh, it's hard to get the rhythm going or it's just a different rhythm with him. But uh, I, I'm loving seeing him in the ring too. This was a good three man tag because uh, it's balanced out. Myron's got the uh, speed and, and all the technical ability uh, Mr. Thomas is the muscle of it. And then Alex Kane, somewhere in between those two, he can work and he's also a powerhouse. So love that team as well. At the same time, Mr. Thomas might be muscle, but he's also very agile and very light on his feet yep. as well too. Very clean yep. in what he does. Uh, in this match, I, again, we've seen, you know, a lot of these six man tag matches in uh, MLW and they don't always work out to be the greatest. This was a nice display. This was a good spot for this matchup. It, you know, again, you're working with some some stars as it is. Myron Reed, a former three time middleweight champion, Alec Kane, former national openweight champion. Uh, you got on the other side, Davy Boy Smith Jr., a former MLW World Heavyweight Champion. So again, collectively, you have the star power within this matchup to hold it as a main event. But they used a lot of it for getting the Billingtons in there, getting them on display showing what they're capable of, allowing them to insert themselves well into the tag division. Again, utilizing, as you said, Myron Reed quite a bit, but also getting Alex Kane in there. Alex Kane getting a lot of his suplexes, his technical ability in on display, and sparingly using the big boys to come in to clean up the mess every once in a while, and a couple of times colliding with each other. And at one point, Davy Boy Smith Jr. got the hot tag. He comes in like a freight train. He's bulldozing over Kane and he bulldozed over, bulldozing over Reed. Suddenly, Mr. Thomas comes in there and then business picks up because he put a big old stop to Davy Boy Smith Jr. in a hurry when he entered the ring. Yeah, and this was good. that It's a match like that where you can start with the smaller guys and then the fans start thinking, we want the big guys in there. We want to see these two giant dudes clash with each other. That's the kind of tension that brings a match through to, through its moments to the, the climax towards the end. And uh, very well done. And I, I think um, the way the guys worked out this match, or if they had an agent of some kind that was helping them, uh, I think it worked out to have the the inexperienced guys work with Myron Reed at the beginning and then you can do the other parts with the big guys and never really did the uh, anyone else like count uh interact with each other all that much like they had their dance partners and they had their spots it didn't look obvious but I was just had my analytical glasses on watching this match and I'm pretty sure that's how it worked out and uh smart to do it that way and then the Billingtons get their first TV taping match out of the way and uh, the nervousness that goes with that. And their confidence can begin to grow because they did a nice job in this. They were better than I thought they'd be. And like you said, that the one older brother, Thomas, he does look like his dad. He, he looks like him. He moves like him. And then he was doing a bunch of, his, of Dynamite Kids moves as well, including the snap suplex and the crisp backbreaker and a few other kind of side salto throws or whatever those things are called and uh doing them with the insane snap just like kid dynamite and uh looking awesome and uh i think it's a good thing that they're doing that that that, that they're following in their dad's footsteps and using the name even though those are pretty big shoes to fill and that'll be a a, a large task that they might not even be up to, but as long as they're doing respect to the dad's name and carrying on the tradition, I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I really hope the best for these two young men <clears throat> because, again, what they showed here tonight, uh, you know, you go in with those... I, I didn't go in with high expectations because, again, you can't. You understand that these guys are very, very young. They're really just, you know, I don't know how many years they've actually been doing this because, again, you can start at a very young age, but they're definitely green. And again, green doesn't have to mean bad. It just means that they haven't had that experience. They haven't been on 
television in a big capacity or anything like that. They haven't been, you know, traveling the entire world yet because they just haven't had that level of experience. But they go out there, and I think they handled themselves quite well. This matchup was put together quite nicely. Uh, the Pomaye Fight Club looks sharp, as always. Uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. has not missed a beat, and what a great get to return to MLW. Uh, MLW now beefing up the scene because, again, Dave Boy Smith Jr., another one that you can slot right into that main event picture. You could put this guy in there against your boy Hammer, and man, people will pay to see that matchup. For sure. And I like the way this season is developing, too, because uh, we didn't see some people at the beginning. I think they have also are holding off on some of the uh, appearances for the latter half of the season, too, such as Delirious. We haven't seen him yet. We haven't seen the Von Eriks yet, and a few other people that it seems fairly sure that they're still with the company but just haven't appeared on TV yet this season. So hopefully they're saving a couple of their feuds and clashes for uh, the latter half of the season and maybe a couple of uh, surprise entrances and appearances. Yeah, you bet. I uh, can't wait to find out what's going to go down in the upcoming weeks. But again, we got to get to the meat of the matter, and that was the finish as uh, the Alex Kane and Myron Reed are both taken out uh, to the outside. They're down and out. Now we've got a three-on-one advantage at this point in time. The Billingtons kind of get the better of Mr. Thomas, who has already kind of been laid out, backing him into the corner where they lift him together because, again, that's a big boy they had to lift. Uh, lifting him onto the shoulders of Davy Boy Smith Jr. is on the middle of the rope and does that power slam, that homage to his own father's finishing maneuver. Uh, taking Mr. Thomas down, Mr. Thomas eats the pinfall. One, two, three, and the Bulldogs get the big victory here tonight on MLW. A huge thing for the Billingtons, getting them over in a big way, especially a big W over the Bumaye Fight Club. But I guarantee you, Alex Kane and co. are going to be pissed, and this is far from over. Yeah, absolutely, and and they kind of might have stole one from Beaumaier Fight Club this week, but Alex Kane and the boys will be back. But in the meantime, we've got a we've got a positive uh, debut for the Billington Bulldogs and a return for Davy Boy Smith Jr., which uh, in one match basically they've uh, they've done both those things. We've debuted the new kids. Uh, Harry Smith is back and. Uh, everybody's looking good with Mr. Thomas taking that pinfall. It's not devastating to Balmain a fight club like it would be if uh, Reed or Kane had taken the pin. So it's really not that bad. Um, um, the, the Bulldogs as the new team get a little bit of stroke and uh, Balmain a fight club, well, they can lick their wounds for now, but you know they'll be back and uh, they probably got the number of the Billington Bulldogs. I'm sure they do. And again, they've also probably been earmarked by the Bulldogs, especially Davey Boy Smith Jr., who sees that Opera Cup, something that he won in 2019 and has a big story and lineage within his own family as well, too. Again, he does not like seeing that in the possession of the Beaumaier Fight Club. So again, as I say, this thing far from over. But that wraps up MLW Fusion for this week. Again, we got another big week coming at you next Thursday night. Hopefully everybody's going to tune into that. But Papa Smokes, all in all, Pretty damn good episode of MLW Fusion, one of the stronger ones of the season. Yeah, and I uh, definitely also heard some grumbling uh, from, from from some fans about last week's yeah. episode. We tried to keep it to a minimum in our uh, review Fusion, but the thing is, it's not perfect. Things go wrong sometimes. Sometimes you think you got the show made and uh, everything goes wrong. We know about this from working in the business as well. It's not perfect, so I'm willing to cut a, some slack to a company that I like, but there was some grumbling amongst the fans, no mm -hmm. question. Oh, yeah, they were none too happy about the way things per, went down last week, but hopefully this is, like I said, MLW redemption because they do this all the time. Every time you get a little bit of slump with MLW, they come firing back with something like this. And again, we are very pleased with this week's episode all in all. So fantastic. But in the meantime and in between time, Papa Smokes, why don't you allow our viewers to know where they can reach out to you? Where can they get a hold of Papa Smokes until next Thursday? All right. Well, I'll be on the monkey bars in Elon Musk's Funland Twitter land, also known as the $8 a month deal of the century. It, I'm at smokes underscore papa and then on Twitch I'm on I'm at 
Papa underscore smokes underscore. That is awesome. Again, you can reach out to myself on the Twitter machine at uh, Real Bobby Munson. You can check out myself and Papa Smokes over at Instagram. We are at Video Bros SK. And yeah, I'm somewhere on Facebook, but does anybody really use that anymore? Don't worry about it because you're checking us out throughout the week. Uh, check it out the shows that I've got. Again, you got this Sunday. Tom Collihue joining myself and Parrish on Busting Out. So another great guest that we got coming at you there. And again, we got the question and answers episode of Beats and Beatdowns right around the corner. So get your questions in to myself and Carl Carafel. Questions about music, questions about pro wrestling, or questions about the influence of music and pro wrestling. Check that out. Beats and Beatdowns can be seen in all on the Video Bros Network, on Turnbuckle Studios, as well as our local establishment. And speaking of our local establishment, check out the ticker below and make sure that you're following our local establishment everywhere, including YouTube, Twitch. We're on all those things. TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever machines out there. OLEs all over the place and we're being we're we're getting a lot of love all over the place from all over the world and that's why we appreciate each and every one of you. So again, thank you very much for joining myself and Papa Smokes this week on Fusion. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us. Make sure to tune in on Saturday for another edition of Prairie Pro Wrestling and we will see you guys all in the very not too distant future like next Thursday. Till then, bye. <laughs>